biggest reason why Errol Spence had such difficulty with Kell Brook is because Kell Brook punished Spence for using his best weapon, the jab. So Errol Spence's jab wasn't as useful in this fight. But so here's something you have to understand about Errol Spence's jab. Errol Spence's jab does not have to land for it to serve the overall purpose or to serve the overall goal that he's looking for. Errol Spence's general goal is to get in a range, usually mid range or the inside where he can unleash damage and combos. And so Kell Brook did a great job of countering his step in jab where he's trying to close the distance. He would counter it with a jab or a left hook or a right hand. And we'll go over some examples right here. The primary and most consistent adjustment Errol Spence does to stop getting countered coming in is to duck immediately after his jab and make an entry that way. So rather than pulling back, he's now ducking and smothering. So instead of coming forward with just the sword, he comes forward with a sword and shield, meaning that he's coming forward protected behind his attack. But then also what you see is a lot of times when he's ducking down, he's usually throwing the left underneath too to try and attack the body at the same time, kind of like a Spartan, how they have the, the, the shield and they have the spear. So they're protecting themselves while attacking at the same time. That's the idea. Also, it allows him to get on the inside where sometimes he was able to work, but a lot of times Kell Brook would push down on him and hold him in a position where he couldn't really get any leverage to attack or do anything like that. But it did provide some opportunities for offense. But when you're fighting the counter puncher, you want to build in hesitation. And sometimes Spence would uh, faint and probe and he would use, he would faint with his feet too. We'll get into that later, an example there. But what he was trying to do at times was actually counter the counter jab of Kell Brook. You're going to see right here, he's going to throw out a jab and then Kell Brook is going to throw out his counter jab and then Spence is going to lean back and then throw a jab over top. Again, I want to make it clear. Spence's overall goal is to find a way in the mid range or the inside where he can work. So the two things we identified uh, tools that he's using uh, a counter jab to help shut down the offense of Brook so that he can find a way inside. And then the defensive reaction to duck instead of pull back so he can find a way inside. Those are two tools, two tools that's helping him find a way to accomplish his goal. And then obviously before with Spence, I talked about him using frames and like con controlling in certain ways, kind of grappling. He's going to do that right here. The jab really turns into a forearm frame where he can pin him in place and get to working. And then he also pushes him up against the ropes and unleashes a good combo. And, and that right there is kind of an example of like one of the big pieces of the game plan, which is getting Kel against the rope so he can work. When Kel's in open space, he can move around and, and he can avoid Spence. But when he's pinned against the rope, Spence can really put in a lot of work, which is where he did a lot of his damage. A really underrated part of Spence's game is his ability to counter, especially off the back foot. So if you pay attention to his feet, he's going to kind of like do like a little faint step in as if he's going to come in behind something. But really, it's just to draw the reaction from Kel. Kel's going to step in and then uh, Errol Spence is going to counter with the left hand. That little stutter step caused Kel to come in. There's a couple things that need to be identified. His work from the outside is generally for the purpose of getting inside, meaning he doesn't do much damage from the outside. Damage is an important word, especially when we're talking about Earl Spence. In my opinion, boxing isn't about just hit and not get hit. It's more about maximum damage given and minimum damage taken, right? So Earl exemplifies this because he will eat a jab to land a draining body shot so he can slowly break down the opponent and start beating them up, right? Errol is willing to take compromising positions to get into a better position. So for example, I was talking about how he's trying to get Kell Brook on the ropes. A lot of times he would back Brook up with his pressure into the ropes, but sometimes he would have to get a little bit creative and then like turn him around in this clinch right here. And then look at all the work he's able to put in and push him back up against the ropes and then put in more work and then keep working. 
and then back him up some more and keep the pressure going. So Errol Spence can be summarized as consistency, body work, answering back and breaking their will. In this fight, breaking his face, which is part of breaking the will. Breaking people down, right? The, the consistency of, he struggled early on. He, str he struggled for most of the fight up until like round eight to getting his jab countered. But he stuck, he stuck behind his shield. He stuck behind the defense that worked and just kept trying to find ways to enter onto the inside. And when he was entering on the inside, he was working consistently, doing consistent damage. All that damage breaks down the opponent. When the opponent gets broken down, they slow down. The reflexes aren't there. The speed isn't there. Uh, uh, the, the reaction time, the defense, the power, everything, everything starts to decrease and Spence gets stronger. And that's how he wins fights. Even though he lost his jab, it was his consistency and his will that won him to fight. Immortality Serum out. Immortality Serum is the faction. Plenty entertainment if you're asking. Game of commentary and reactions. There ain't no faking. Neither is the capping. It just gon' lights, camera, action. Let's go.